Okay class, it is 5.3 today, which is solving trig equations. The one thing that I want you to get out of this is we are never going to divide both sides of an equation by a trig function. Um, when that happens, you end up losing one of the solutions. It's kind of the same idea as never dividing by x. And we're going to use the same ideas that we've been using with these simplifying and verifying, um, where we have the factoring and the distributive property and those sorts of things. And we're not going to divide both sides. We're going to factor out and we're going to distribute. Um, and we're going to use the identity and the unit circle. Okay, so here I have the unit circle. Um, which will aid us. So we are going to solve this equation here and we're going to solve it for a on this interval and then b we're going to find all solutions. And to find all solutions it's going to be the asymptote like, like notation. Okay, so we're going to start off with our trig function, 4 sine squared x minus 3 equals 0, and we're going to solve it. So we're going to add 3 to the other side, 4 sine squared x equals 3, divide by 4 is 3 fourths, and we're going to take the square root of both sides, and so we end up with sine of x, and remember when you take the square root of both sides, you end up with plus or minus the square root. And we have sine of x equals square root 3 over 2, and we want to find the angle where sine, or in other words, the y-coordinate, because it's sine, the y-coordinate is negative root 3 over 2. So looking at the unit circle, we know sine is plus or minus root 3 over 2. So it's over here at pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. All of those have a plus or a minus square root 3 over 2. So I'm going to write those down that my x, my angle, can be pi over 3 or 2 pi over 3 or 4 pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3. So you will want your unit circle for this unit um, right in front of you. So this is the answer to part A all solutions on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. From 0 to 2 pi meaning on one unit circle. <coughs> okay, so then for part B, we're going to look at all solutions. And this is where we're going to use the asymptote no notation. So if we start off with our first one, x equals pi over 3. That's our first one. And similar to the asymptote notation, we'd look at the first non-negative one and we'd add the distance between them. So at pi over 3, here, we have one, and then again at 4 pi over 3, and those are half a circle away, or they are pi apart. So we can say plus pi n. So we took the first one, and so when we have that first equation, pi over 3 plus pi n, if we add 1 pi n, that's 3 pi over 3 plus 1 pi over 3 gives us 4 pi over 3. And it's going to keep picking up those every pi apart. We're going to take the second um, <coughs> answer we had, which was 2 pi over 3. And if we look at 2 pi over 3, and I'll switch my color to green, here is my 2 pi over 3. And if I go all the way around to 5 pi over 3 at pi apart, we see that it is also pi apart. So if I can have my 2 pi over 3 and I add 3 pi over 3, I get 5 pi over 3. And this would be all solutions, or all solutions on the interval from 0 to pi. Okay, so I know some of you are kind of questioning part b, and I know some of you are saying, well, isn't it just all pi over 3? Like, why isn't it just pi over 3n? Well, it's not pi over 3n, because you see there's no angle it's not picking up at pi. The y-coordinate is not minus or plus root 3 over 2 at pi and 0 pi. So it's not every pi over 3. Okay. So on to problem 2. So for problem 2, we're going to find all solutions of sine of x minus square root 2 equals minus sine of x. So we're going to solve this. What we need to do is we're going to bring the sine of x to the other side. So I'm going to 
bring that over, and then I'm going to bring that over. So I have sine of x plus sine of x equals square root 2. When I brought my negative square root over, it becomes positive. When I bring the negative sine over, it becomes positive. I have one sine x plus another sine x, so I have two sine of x is square root 2, and I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Sine of x is root 2 over 2. So now I want to look on the unit circle for the x's where the y coordinate is square root 2 over 2, and now it's just a plus square root 2 over 2. So it is a plus square root 2 at pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. So my two x values are x equals pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. And it's not down here in the other quadrants because sine is negative. So my answer for a, all solutions on the interval from 0 to 2 pi, is just those two angles. For part b, I need to find all possible solutions. And I can start off with my first one x equals pi over 4, and if I say pi over 4 plus to get here, pi over 2, it's not every pi over 2, because it's not picking up the ones down there, but it is pi over 4 plus if I go all the way around the unit circle, which is 2 pi n, I get back there. And also if I take the second answer, 3 pi over 4, start here and go one full revolution around the circle, then I would pick up all possible solutions. So there is no exact rule for what you add over here in this one, the 2 pi n, and the previous one, the pi n. We just need to see the pattern of what we see between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so here we are going to solve this, and remember, 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 we are not going to divide by um, any trig functions. So in algebra class, this is similar to x squared equals 2x. In algebra class, we are not allowed to divide by x here. But we could group everything onto one side by subtracting 2x, and then use the distributive property, and so on. So we're going to do the exact same thing here, and then we'd set each piece equal to 0. Solve. So we're going to do the same thing here, sine squared x equals 2 sine of x. So I'm going to bring this term over by subtracting it to the other side, sine squared x minus 2 sine of x equals 0. I'm going to factor out a like term, which is sine of x, and I'm left with sine of x minus 2 equals 0. See, I distributed that back in and I get sine squared. And sine squared times minus 2 gives me the minus sine squared. And then I'm going to set each of my terms equal to 0. So I have sine of x equals 0, and sine of x minus 2 equals 0. And if I continue to solve this, I get sine of x equals 2. Well, if you plug this into your calculator, the arc sine of 2, you get an error because you know that sine the value you get out for sine is between minus 1 and 1, so you get some sort of domain error in your calculator, which tells us it's not possible, okay, because 2 is not in the domain of arc sine, and so it does not provide um, a valid solution, so no valid solution. So we finished off that piece but we still have to go back to solving sine of x equals 0. So sine is the y-coordinate, and we want to know where the y-coordinate equals 0, and the y-coordinate equals 0 at 0 and pi, and 2 pi, and 3 pi, and so on. So I know that my x values has to be 0, pi, 2 pi, and so on. So here, to go back to the directions, it's solve. Um, so sometimes your book says solve, and says sometimes it means find all solutions. Um, so we're finding all solutions, all real numbers. And it's 0, pi, 2 pi, and so on. So it's all pi n. It's all multiples of pi. If I plug in n equals 0, get that. n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals negative 1, I'd get the previous one. So this would be all real solutions. So this would be very similar to what we saw with the asymptote notation. Okay, so we're going to solve this on the interval from 0 to pi, 2 pi, and you should notice that this looks like something to factor. 
looks like two, my, two x squared minus x minus one equals zero. And if we were to factor this, go ahead and use the box method if you need to factor it. But it's two x plus one and x minus one equals zero. And then we'd go on and solve each of those. We're gonna solve it similarly. So we're going to factor it as two cosine of x plus one and cosine of x minus one equals zero. I'm gonna go ahead and double check. I have two cosine squared x minus two cosine plus cosine. So those two combined gives me the minus. And then the minus and the plus works. So I'm gonna set each equal to zero. So two cosine of x plus one equals zero and cosine of x minus one equals zero and solve get cosine of x is minus one half and cosine of x is one. So we're gonna solve both of these. So for the first one, we have cosine of x is minus one half. So it's cosine, so I'm looking for the x coordinate on the unit circle and I want cosine to be negative. So I know I'm in quadrants two and three and my angles are two pi over three and four pi over three. So I have x equals two pi over three and four pi over three. Then I'm gonna look at cosine of x equals one. So I'm again looking for the x coordinate equal to be one. And it's cosine the x coordinate equaling one. So on the unit circle, the x coordinate equals one over here at the angle two pi. So I know <coughs> that my x can also equal two pi. So those are my solutions. Um, so I have x equals two pi over three, four pi over three. And since it is the interval from zero, including zero to two pi, my angle when my cosine of x equals one equals two pi, well, it's technically also at the radian zero, which is why I left that extra space there. Okay, and that is the problem. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next problem. And so for this problem, we're solving, which means find all the solutions. We're going to use that end notation. Um, and I say that we have two different trig functions. So when you have two different trig functions, it often is optimal to get just one trig function. And since they're both squared, I know that we can use the Pythagorean identity that says that secant squared x is tangent squared x plus one. So I'm gonna replace secant squared over here with the tangent squared. So I have three times tangent squared x plus one minus two tangent squared x minus four equals zero. We distribute, so I have three tangent squared x plus three minus two tangent squared x minus four equals zero. Combine like terms, so 3 tangent squared x minus 2 tangent squared x is just tangent squared x. We have a plus 3 minus 4, which is a minus 1. Bring the 1 to the other side, so you have tangent squared x equals 1. Um, you can take the square root of both sides, and when you take the square root, don't forget, you get both the plus or the minus. The square root of 1 is 1. So tangent of x equals plus or minus one, and tangent is the ratio of y over x. So when we take the ratio of y over x equaling one, it's when we have these like terms is when we get plus or minus one. So it's pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, and seven pi over four are our angles. So x is pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, and seven pi over four. Because remember, tangent is y over x. So when I take the ratio of y over x, I get one or minus one. And this is very similar to the first problem, um, where this is all the solutions between zero and pi, and my first and my third are pi apart. And if I keep adding pi, I'd get all of them. So it'd be pi over four plus pi n. And then if I take my second one, three pi over four and add pi, and keep adding pi, which is a half a circle, I'd pick up all of those. And those would be all solutions.